I'm a class of 2020 grad from Zoom University and I'm going to be talking to you about ways to travel during college and how to fund your trips. I went to five continents and 15 plus countries while in university and in this video we are not using daddy's money. Your parents work hard to give you necessities, so you shouldn't make them pay for your pleasures, especially when you have it in yourself to do it yourself. Make sure to stay till the end because that's when I'm going to be talking about ways I fund travel now that I wish I had done starting earlier, like when I was a freshman. The first time I've ever left the country was for my first semester abroad in Paris, France. Right now in quarantine and honestly as soon as possible in college, you should be working your class schedule around your plans to study abroad. This is best done with your advisor because they just know the school, they know the policies and all the schools are different. And before, it's also good to just be aware of the different programs your school has available for you and your major and the places you want to go depending if you have a preference already. It's also good to understand the application deadline and the steps so you know when the time comes when you have to start getting things done. And it's the same with scholarships. More on scholarships later. Hello! I'm back. I had to change because that cap was just hurting my big head and I got hungry and then sad and then I had a meeting and then a lot of things but now I'm here. A misconception I usually get about studying abroad for a semester is that it's expensive but really the longer you spend traveling the slower you spend money because you change your habits. So for example in a one week international trip I would spend around a thousand dollars and for one semester abroad that's how much I would spend and that's also how much I would spend during my two week trip in Australia. So really you can stretch out your dollar to make it count for you. Typically for a normal semester, my tuition is covered with grants and any scholarships I get are put into anything else that isn't tuition. So I usually use it for my expensive rent in Austin, but that's why I also needed it for study abroad because I needed to pay for like everything abroad. And I honestly think that Study abroad scholarships are kind of easy to get. Maybe because I got all the ones I applied to, but so can you. The application pool for study abroad scholarships is so <sighs> small and specific. Like, it's only the people studying abroad at this one moment, so like the semester or summer you're doing it, and then it can get even smaller. So that's already people just studying abroad, not people going to school, just people studying abroad. And then it just gets more and more specific the more you go. Like it could be just at the people at your school, like university, and then the people at your school inside your university or even orgs will give you scholarships. So definitely be applying to those because you have a lot less competition than other scholarships. There's also a couple really big study abroad scholarships. One of them is Gilman. I was able to get that. And to get scholarships like that and even the smaller ones, you really have to show how you're unique and how you would benefit from studying abroad. My unique thing was always talking about this one experience where I was once ignorant and then the thing that taught me about what I was ignorant about and then just talking about my self-improvement and how I've developed since then. So find your story that is somewhat similar to how you've developed here and why you deserve to leave to develop more. During my first semester abroad in France, I wasn't very responsible with my money yet and I was kind of running out. So for my last trip to Santorini where I got this shirt, I had to take out a loan. <laughs> I'll explain later, but if you're going to take out a loan to help fund travel or school, the first one should be the subsidized loans from the government because the government pays for the interest so you don't have to worry about that while you're in school. After you do, but once you're in school, or while you're in school, it's not something you have to worry about. So definitely first take out subsidized loans if you're going to be taking out a loan and then you can look at other options afterwards. You might be thinking I'm crazy and 
maybe I was because I really just took out a loan to keep traveling. But also, I kind of needed like money for food and stuff. Kind of. I mean, I talked about it in another video. You can say here that trip was so worth it. I met so many great people that I still talk to. And one of them is a coach. She's awesome. Today, when I was getting sad, I had a call with her and her little um, group. We all work towards crazy impossible dreams. So like mine is to do YouTube. And I love that group and the people that I met. I just, I love them. <laughs> and I still talk to them. So worth it. But yeah, that's one of the ways I paid. So honestly, it's not always glitz and glamour. Like I'm in debt now because of it. But worth. Worth. I was living my best life. That was the best solo travel independent trip I've ever had. So it was my peak of 2018. And then after coming back from abroad, I reached my lowest peak at some point because I was just not happy in my normal life, especially when I had my best life to compare to it. So I made this commitment to myself to find ways to get money in different ways so that I can travel even if I don't study abroad. Because before I just was okay with being poor or like not working and not having my own money because I just didn't find a need and now travel is like the only thing that motivates me to get money. So I funded my next trip which was my dream trip to Madrid and Morocco which was so high on my bucket list and I did that with my part-time job selling things and selling services. So for part-time jobs, I really recommend you get a part-time job that's almost like an internship or it could be called an internship that really relates to the major you're working for or studying because they pay higher. So like if you're going to be a doctor or something, then like do something in the medical field and then hopefully those are the ones that pay higher. I am a marketing student, so I did a marketing, I got a marketing job and that paid higher than me working at some fast food place. So I definitely recommend you try to find jobs related to your major as soon as possible because it gets you experience and it usually pays higher than normal part-time jobs. If you're not studying anything that would get you a higher paying job, so you think, Definitely just look into the skills you have and what you can offer and maybe look for the jobs that are higher paying that you can actually do and get paid for doing. For things to sell, you can either resell things you have or sell things that you make that people need. One of the things that is really popular for reselling is clothes, so like Poshmark or Depop and then selling things that people need so maybe cute gifts during christmas i did that once especially for this trip i was selling scrunchies and right now me and my family are selling masks because we can sew and most of, most of us can't work so we kind of started a little mini family business if you guys are interested in our sewing or tailoring needs you can find our social media below and one of the things i made for that trip in particular was a dress. I made someone's like custom made dress and that paid enough to help buy my ticket <laughs> to Europe. So definitely think about the skills you have that you can sell. Um, oh, so that's a service. That's the service I sold. I kind of sold my sewing services for that customized dress and then got money to travel. So one of the things you can do right now in quarantine is either like think of the skills you have so that you can try to sell them. A lot of people do it with like their photography skills and other things. So see what you can do. And if you can't think of anything, then this is the time to develop skills that you can sell. I know it may seem hard right now to be getting money but there are people out there making money. You just need to find out how you're going to be making money. Sitting around thinking there's no way you're going to get a job in this economy isn't going to help you get a job. You have to go out there and try your best. And if you find that you can't make more money than you are already making, 
then one of the biggest things I learned when I was trying to live my best life again was that I needed to stop spending money if I couldn't be making more money because then that'll help you get more money because you'll be spending less. So one of my biggest things is to reduce costs. I stopped eating out, I started budgeting better, and one of the big things you can do is find cheaper rent so that you don't have that much of an expense because that's probably your biggest expense. And a way to do that in college is to get scholarships that will help pay for your rent. Doing all those things to make money so that I could travel again without needing to study abroad was so fulfilling because I worked that hard to make money to go on a trip that was so high on my bucket list, so important to me, not only because it was on my bucket list, but also because I worked hard for it. I earned it, so I went on it, and I lived it up, and you can do the exact same. If you have any questions or want me to expand on any of that stuff, message me, comment, all that. I'm on Instagram, I'll link that down below, and honestly, if you're not following me, on Instagram, you are missing out. I have sometimes funny content or sometimes it's just good. Instagram is also where I basically got 100% of people to vote for this video on how I was able to travel during college, all the different ways. So now I'm bringing it down. If you want to be part of helping me find my next helpful content or just any content, definitely go follow me there because I need help with coronavirus content. I went on in college was to Miami slash Fort Lauderdale, Southern Florida with my family and we rarely do family trips. We only went because we were celebrating my siblings graduating from college. No, high school. I just graduated from college. We probably wouldn't have gone anywhere if I wasn't doing the planning because none of us are planners. That could be the case with your family too. Maybe what it takes to get your family on a trip is someone to take the initiative and organize it. That's what I'm doing with our social distancing mini trip. I'm going to be talking more about safe ways to travel during this pandemic next week. So make sure you subscribe so you can see my ideas and tips. Depending on how your family splits the trip up, it might not be a way that you fund your own travels, but this is a way and an opportunity to be able to travel and see the world while you're in college. It was you that took the first step for your family to go to. During my summer internship last year, I took a weekend trip to Seattle and I was able to do it during like a longer weekend because we had an early release Friday. So that's a good way to travel during your internship period. And I only went because I was sewing someone a dress, another dress, and I had to go and make sure she fit in it and then be able to fix it if she didn't. And a lot of people actually travel for work like that. A lot of people that make content for businesses do that. And this is the time to find and perfect your skill that you're going to monetize later. That same summer, me and my intern friends had a quick weekend trip to Austin where I let them stay in my apartment since I go to school there or went to school there. And another of our friend went there to visit her friend. And that's one way to find an opportunity to travel because you can see your friends in other places, maybe other colleges, cities, and they might let you stay with there and that'll help you save money. But you get to see your friends, so that's always a good excuse to go somewhere new. My last trip of that summer was going to Disney World with my partner's family. They offered me and him a little student discount on our part of the trip because we have less money. And that was so nice of them and I really appreciate it. And I'm not asking you to intrude on someone's vacation, but if they invite you, I mean, that's another experience you can have. But if you are close to someone or know people that have a discount somewhere, a membership somewhere that can help you save money, then maybe you can ask them if you can borrow it, if it doesn't cost anything to them. If it does, you can offer services to them like watering their plants. I don't know. Maybe you have something to offer that I don't, you know? So that's an idea too. See what your network has and what you 
are comfortable asking for and what you think is reasonable to give them back. I was able to study another semester in Hong Kong where I applied the lessons I learned about money from my first exchange. This program was also cheaper than going to Western Europe. I was budgeting before and during the trip so that I could limit my spending using the Mint app. It also helped that I was traveling for a longer time like I mentioned before. There are also places in Asia that are fairly cheap to travel to like the Philippines which I'll link down below because I loved my time there. The protests in Hong Kong got a little too severe on campus. We actually got kicked out of the country and we couldn't finish our semester like normal. I ended up having to go to Singapore and Vietnam where I have family and they were so hospitable. Do not underestimate visiting family in new unvisited areas because that's just so cool and they do so much for you. This reminds me of when me and Stephanie had to go to Houston for our visa stuff. Stephanie is my friend from UT, but like we became best friends during my first semester in France. And we had to stay with my family in Houston because it was a whole deal with our visa. And that was just so nice. They did so much. We, able, we were able to see more of Houston than I usually do when I see them. Definitely. Try to hit up your family, just like you can with your friends. On my last few trips before coronavirus, like my two weeks in Australia and what would have been my spring break and senior weekend trips, I talk about those in my coronavirus video here. I saved up money from my summer internship. You get a lot of money if you work for corporations during the summer. Just like I mentioned before, saving expenses is so important. So I picked the internship that was either going to pay for my rent or I could stay with my parents or somehow just not have to deal with rent money so I could make more money. Even if the one I was comparing it to was so much more glamorous to the outside world. It also just wasn't going to get me what I needed for the goals I had senior year. Not that goals are only around money, it's the fact that I needed that so I could travel during senior year. If your dream internship isn't the one that pays you the most or whatever, you know, that's you, that's you. Just try to save money where you can. The last way I was able to travel in college is related to that. If you apply to big companies, or companies that will fly you for your last interview, your last round interviews at their headquarters, then you possibly get a day or so to check out the city they're in. I did that for a company in Chicago and they paid for my food and my flight there and I spent the day when I wasn't interviewing in Millennial Park and just exploring the city. Some people even do that after they have a job because they get to see a new place. The company I was with, they would have paid for my flight even if I wanted to stay longer than one day, but I would have to pay for the hotel and I wanted to save money for trips that never happened. Thanks, coronavirus. If any of these are ways that you think you can travel in college, then please like the video. Here are some ways you can travel during college that I didn't do, but I wish I did, or I wish I started doing earlier than right now. One of them being investing in stocks. I wish I started that as soon as I turned 18, but at least now is a good time because things are cheap right now. A lot of stocks are down with the economy and a free place to get started on investing is Robinhood. You can get a free stock with the link below. I'll also get one, which I'll appreciate for telling you about the app. But before you buy any more stocks, you should do research to make sure you're buying the right things. I wish I took a gap year or a gap semester because you can do so much and just easily come back to school. It's going to be hard to do that during another time in your life. There's a lot you can do, like get a visa to work in Australia or New Zealand or be a nanny in France. But make sure you check with your school policy to see how that would work. Because you don't want to come back assuming that it's going to be fine and then they just expel you. Credit cards are a big way people end up traveling for free later on. Before you can apply for a really good travel credit card though, you have to build your credit. For students, the Discover It cards are the best credit cards. 
They give you $20 for every year you have a 3.0 GPA or up. So it's better the earlier you get it. I wish I didn't get it my senior year. <laughs> Depending how early you sign up for the card, you could get a really good travel credit card while you're in college and then have those benefits ready for you after you graduate. I have the Discover It cash back card, which is just better for me and I get up to 5% cash back. The Chrome one is also good, but I don't really drive or pay for gas that often. If you use my link to sign up for a Discover card, then you'll get $50 or you won't really get a sign up bonus. Don't forget, for upcoming safe travel ideas during quarantine, hit the bell and join the fancy fam.